This is a very special installment of Almost Cult Classics, as it is the first to cover a subgenre of comedy films known as the Dangerfield Vehicles. This particular film wasn't the first of them, and it wouldn't be the last, but it's probably my personal favorite. And as it's also September, I think it's a perfect time to celebrate Back to School with, well, Back to School. An almost cult classic. Released in 1986, Back to School is the perfect blend of 80s films. It's a bit of Caddyshack, a little Revenge of the Nerds, just a bit of John Hughes, and a dash of sports drama. Not to mention, it also features some of the quintessential supporting players of 80s cinema, such as Robert Downey Jr. sporting a different hairstyle in every scene, Adrian Barbeau, Burt Young, Ned Beatty, M. Emmett Walsh, and of course, Sam Kinison. Well, pussies like you! We're back here partying, putting headbands on, doing drugs, listening to the goddamn Beatle albums! Uh, uh! <laughs> it even features Edie McClurg as a secretary and Billy Zabka as the school bully. I don't think so, Osborne. Melon, about your friend here, straighten him out. Look, Chess, a lot of people waiting. It wouldn't really be fair, you know? It's... I'll tell you what. Maybe if you got a note from each and every one of these people saying that it was all right, then we'd reconsider. But until that day, take a hike, you elitist fraternity scumbag. It was also produced by Harold Ramis and scored by Danny Elfman, with Oingo Boingo even making an appearance. All this film is missing is a training montage. Oh wait, that's here too. The film centers around Thornton Mellon, a self-made millionaire and owner of a plus-size clothing chain. I love your dress. Don't you, Thornton? It's such a lovely shade of green. Yeah, if that dress had pockets, you'd look like a pool table. You should try my tall and fat stores. No offense. Feeling he doesn't fit in with his wife's high society friends, Thornton decides to file for a divorce and reconnect with his son from his first marriage, who's away at college. His son, Jason, declares that he wants to drop out of school, citing the fact that Thornton didn't go to college himself, yet still managed to be successful. I mean, stay in school. Study harder. You can be whatever you want to be. You want to be a loser, you be a loser. You want to be a winner, you be a winner. Jason, it's up to you. You can do it. Remember, you're a melon. And so, to prove a point, Thornton decides to join his son and enrolls as a college freshman, or rather buys his way in, with the aptly named Dean Martin. This widely esteemed Grand Lakes University of ours as a freshman? That's right, Dean Martin. Are you comfortable? Oh, I'm, I'm fine, yeah. Oh, the chair. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Naturally, hijinks ensue and feathers are ruffled, but they're a lot of fun to watch. I'm willing to bet this film is greenlit just by someone pitching the image of Rodney Dangerfield walking around a college campus in a bathrobe. And while there's some pretty predictable comedy scenarios, the script also left room for Rodney to interject some of his famous one-liners. Oh, we were doomed from the start. I'm an earth sign, she's a water sign. Together we made mud. Oh, I picked up beauty. And she played around, too. Uh, when she said I do, I should have said with who? Also, as Roddy Dangerfield was a spokesperson for Miller at the time, it was the only beer allowed in the film, which leads to some less than subtle product placement. God, never mind, I got my own here, sorry. Thornton also uses his wealth to aid him in his studies, resulting in one of my favorite film cameos of all time. And you've got a major paper coming up on Kurt Vonnegut. You haven't even read any of the books. I tried. I don't understand a word of it. So how are you going to write the paper then, huh? Hi, I'm Kurt Vonnegut. I'm looking for Thornton Mellon. Uh, only 
Come in. The idea to make Thornton a millionaire was actually a suggestion from Howard Ramis, as the original script had him being more financially troubled. It definitely makes for an interesting character arc, as Thornton learns the hard way that he can't buy his way through life. I'm going to assume that if you watch this channel, this is a film that you've probably seen before, or at least are familiar with. But if you haven't watched it in a long time, I really recommend revisiting it. When you go jogging, do you leave potholes? When you make love, do you have to give directions? At the zoo, do elephants throw you peanuts? Do you look at a menu and say, okay? As I said in the intro, there would be many more of these Dangerfield starring comedies to come, which I'll get to in subsequent videos. But this is one, in my opinion, that used him the best. It has the most heart, the most laughs, and is the most 80s of them all.